Hello everybody, this is Vaishri Vengadesh. After learning about the location and boundaries of India and Indian Standard Time in the previous episodes, today we will be learning about the major physiographic divisions of India and before seeing what are all the major physiographic divisions of India, let us first know what does the word physiographic division mean? It's nothing but explaining the distinct landforms of a region is called as physiographic divisions of India, of a place. And India also, like any other country, has different physiographic divisions, which are made broadly classified into six categories. They are the Himalayan mountain wall of the north, or we can say it as the great northern mountains, the northern plains, the peninsula plateau, the Indian desert, the coastal plains, and the islands. See? This area fully constitute the northern mountains and this is the northern plains, the peninsula plateau, the Indian desert called the Star Desert, the coastal plains and the islands. So these are all the major physiographic divisions of India. And now let us see the first physiographic division of India, the northern mountains. And before knowing about or learning about the northern mountains, let us see how they were formed. We all know that around 225 to 250 million years ago, all the land masses on the earth were clubbed together into a single piece called as Pangaea, which means supercontinent. And this Pangaea was surrounded by a super water body called as Pantalaza. And slowly, after 25 million years, this Pangaea landmass, because of the plate movements and tectonic activities, they started drifting away from each other and they clustered into two greater landmasses. And the landmass in the north was called as Laurasia and in the south was called as Gondwana land. And now, Yes, shallow sea water formed between these two landmasses called as Tethys Sea. And see here, at that time, India was a part of Gondwana land. The Indian subcontinent was a part of Gondwana land. It was here. Then slowly again, these landmasses, they kept moving or drifting away from each other. See, and finally, they all reached to the present position. When this collation was formed, when this Indian landmass drifted away from the Gondwana land and collided with this Eurasian plate, the great northern mountains were formed. The great northern mountains were formed. This was how the northern mountains were formed. Okay, now let us see the northern mountains. Actually, the northern mountains, they radiate from a place called Pamir Knot. Actually, what is Pamir Knot? We all know what is Pamirs. Pamirs are called as the roof of the world, right? And this Pamir Knot, not why the name Knot is given here? Because different mountain ranges of Central Asia, they radiate from this Pamir Knot. Very important mountain ranges like Kunlun, Karakoram, Hindu Kush, Tian Shan, all these mountain ranges, they radiate from this Pamir. And that's why this is called as Pamir Knot. And the northern mountains, they are the youngest and loftiest mountain chains of the world. And they were formed only a few million years ago. And they were formed by the tectonic activity. And they are the fold mountains stretching for 2,500 kilometers from west to east, that is from the Indus Gaj to the Brahmaputra Gaj. And this Pamir Knot, it serves as a connecting link between Himalayan mountains and other high ranges of Central Asia. And this Himalayas extend in an arch shape eastwards. And do you know what is the meaning of Himalayas? Himalayas mean abode of snow. Himalayas is a Sanskrit word. And this northern mountain is further classified into three. The Trans Himalayas, which is also called as Western Himalayas, the Himalayas, and Purvanchal, which is also called as Eastern Himalayas. 
Trans Himalayas, Himalayan ranges, and Eastern Himalayas or Purvanchal. And now let us see about the Trans Himalayas or Western Himalayas. This Trans Himalayas, it is can be seen in these three states of India: Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, and Uttar Pradesh. This Karakoram. Ladakh range and Saskar range and Kailash range. All these four mountain ranges together form the Western Himalayas or the Trans Himalayas. See here, Karakora, Ladakh, Saskar and Kailash range. These four ranges together form the Trans Himalayas, which is also known as Western Himalayas. And in Tibet, they are called as Tibetan Himalayas. And these Trans Himalayas they are 40 kilometers wide in the east and west extremities. On both the west and east, they are 40 kilometers wide. And in the central part, they are 225 kilometers wide. And this Himalayas, they contain the sediments of the shallow Tethys Sea, which was found in between the Gondwana land and the Laurasian plate. And next to the Western Himalayas, we will be learning about Himalayas. And this map shows the spatial spread of Himalayan mountain system across seven nations. See here, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, China, Nepal, Bhutan, and Myanmar. In, actually, in Myanmar, it is called as Arakanyoma. This is called as Arakanyoma in Myanmar. This map shows the spatial spread of our Himalayan mountains. And the northern mountains, they actually consist of 10 highest peaks of the world out of the 14. And this Himalayas has nine highest peaks of the world out of the 14. Now let us see about this in detail. And Everest is the highest peak in Himalayas. And no doubt Everest is the highest peak of the world, which is in Nepal. It is not in India, it is in Nepal. Actually, in Karakoram range, we have a mountain peak called K2 which is also called West, God in Astin, and this serves as the highest peak of India, whereas Everest is the highest peak of the world, which is in Nepal. And Himalayas constitutes the core part of the northern mountains. This Himalayas constitutes the core part of the northern mountains. This is Karakoram. In Karakoram, you have Mount K2 here. See here, this is Mount K2, the highest peak of India, and you have Ladakh Range, Saskar Range, then we have Kailash Range. Here, this is Kailash. It serves as the source of river Brahmaputra, Kailash Range. And this is the Greater Himalayas, which is also called as Himadri, the continuous chain of mountains. See here the Greater Himalayas, which is also called as Himadri. And to the south of Greater Himalayas, you have Lesser Himalayas here. And Shivaniks, or the Outer Himalayas, to the south of Lesser Himalayas. And this Himalayas constitute the core part of northern mountains. And they are young fold mountains with sharp peaks. And they are formed by the movement of Eurasian landmass in the north and Gondwana landmass in the south. The Tethy Shallow Sea found in between was uplifted by the compression and resulted in the formation of Himalayas. And these three are the divisions, or the main divisions of the Himalayas, Himadri, Himachal, and Shivaliks. And this is the map of the greater Himalayas, the Himadri. And this is the extension of Himadri. And this is the northernmost and continuous range with the lofty peaks. And it has the glaciers, which serves as a source of many perennial rivers of India like Ganga, Yamuna, and Indus. And they are permanently frozen, about 25 kilometers wide with average height of 6,000 meters. And because of very, very low temperature, this region has very, very less rainfall. And these ranges have many glaciers like Gangotri, Yamunotri, and Siachen. And out of 14 highest peaks of the world, it holds nine. And next to the Himadri, to the south of Himadri, we have Lesser Himalaya or Middle Himalaya. These ranges lie to the north of Shivalik range, the Doladar and Pirpanjal 
in Jammu and Kashmir and see here Pirpanchal and Dauladar. These two ranges, the Missouri range, all these ranges of the Mahabharat range, these ranges, they all these ranges belong to the Middle or Lesser Himalaya. The average height of the range is 4,000 meters to 4,500 meters and the width is about 80 kilometers. And famous hill stations like Dalhousie, Dharmashala, Shimla, Mushauri, Nainital and Darjeeling, they all belong to this range. And also this range has many important pilgrimage centers like Kedarnath, Amarnath, Vaishnava Devi Temple, etc. And the southernmost range of Himalayas is called as Shivaliks or Outer Himalayas. And they are the most discontinuous range extending from Jammu and Kashmir to Azam. And they are partly made by the debris brought by the Himalayan rivers. And the height altitude varies between 900 to 1100 meters. And longitudinal valleys are found between the Shivaliks and the Lesser Himalayas. And these longitudinal valleys are called as Jans in the west and dewars in the east. We know what are valleys. Valleys are nothing but low land surrounded by hills. But what is this Jans? These Jans, see here, these Jans are longitudinal valleys or elongated valleys found between two parallel range of mountain chains in geologically enfold mountains. Unlike typical river valleys, these dens have a structural origin and they are covered with the boulders and gravel originating from the erosion of Himalayas and the Shivalik uplands. And the Dakar Den, the capital of Uttarakhand, is one such longitudinal valley. Den. See, it is found between these two parallel ranges of Himalayas, Lesser Himalayas and Shivaliks. And next, the third division of the northern mountains is Purvanchal Hills, which is also called as Eastern Himalayas. They are nothing but offshoot of Himalayas. These are the eastern offshoot of Himalayas. It extends in the northeastern states of India, and most of these hills are located along the border of India and Myanmar. Most of see here, Atkal Hills, Naha Hills, Mizo Hills, all these hills, they are found between the border of India and Myanmar inside India. And these are all the known hills of this Purvanchal Hills, Dafla, Abar, Mishmi, Patkai, Naga, Manipur Hills, Mizo, Tripura, Mikira, Garo, Kazi, and Jaintia Hills. These are the hills which are collectively known as Purvanchal Hills. Now, let us see about the importance of Himalayas. The Himalayas, they block the southwest monsoon winds and they cause heavy rainfall to northern plains and north India. And no doubt that they form a natural barrier to our subcontinent. And it is a source of many perennial rivers like Indus, Ganges, Brahmaputra, etc. The northern mountains are described as the paradise of tourists due to its natural beauty. Yes, it has its a paradise for the trekkers and also the people who love to visit or view the scenic beauty. They prefer these ranges, visiting these places. And also, no doubt, it has many hill stations and many pilgrimage centers like Amarnath, Kedarnath, Badrinath, and Vaishnavadi temples. It provides raw materials for many forest based industries. It prevents the cold winds blowing from the Central Asia and protects India from severe cold. Himalayas are renowned for the rich biodiversity. So, the Northern mountains of India is very clear to you now. See you in my next episode. Bye.